Hi guys, how's it going? I'm having a good time telling you about some of the more speculative ideas of modern physics, taking a walk on the wild side, so to speak. In earlier episodes, I talked at length of the rules that govern the universe. But what if the universe isn't the whole story? What if there are many universes? What does that even mean? That sounds like an excellent topic to explore in this week's episode of Subatomic Stories. The word universe literally means everything, the whole shebang, all of the stars, galaxies, dark matter, dark energy, as far as the most powerful telescopes can see. It's even farther than that. It's everything. But everything doesn't always mean everything, I guess. Scientists are kicking around an idea that there isn't just one universe, rather there are multiple universes. The word we use for this is the multiverse. So why, just why, do scientists think that the multiverse idea is even the tiniest bit reasonable? And what, exactly, is a multiverse? Okay, this multiverse idea seems really dodgy. Why is it considered a credible possibility? Well, it comes down to one question. Why is the universe the way it is, and why is it so suitable for human life? Do the laws of physics make it inevitable, or is it all a vast and cosmic accident? There are many parameters that govern the universe, from the respective strengths of electromagnetism and gravity, to the ratio of the mass of neutrons and protons, to the mass density of the universe, to the amount of dark energy. They all have a specific value. But it's interesting to ask just what would happen if they were changed just a little. If our universe is inevitable, then changing these parameters by small amounts wouldn't change the universe much. It would look more or less like it does now. But that's not the situation. In case after case, a small change in a parameter would make for an entirely different universe. For instance, if the energy density of the universe were just a tiny bit different, one of two things would have happened. If we're just a tiny bit higher, gravity would have been so strong that the expansion of the universe would have reversed itself very quickly, and the entire cosmos would have collapsed into a black hole long before life could have formed. Or, if the density were a little bit lower, the expansion of the universe would have been so high that matter would have spread out so smoothly and so quickly that galaxies, stars, planets would never have formed, and certainly humans could never exist. There are dozens of examples of instances where small changes in parameters would result in the universe that is completely inhospitable to life as we know it. The terminology that scientists, philosophers, and theologians use for this state of affairs is that the universe is finely tuned. Something was responsible for the values of parameters that resulted in our comfy universe. One possible explanation for this fine-tuning is called intelligent design, which says that the universe couldn't exist without a mindful creator who set the parameters the way they are. Such a position is consistent with existing data, but it's inherently not scientific. It's not testable. So what can science do for us? That's where the multiverse comes in. The multiverse hypothesis avoids the entire problem by saying that there is no fine-tuning. Rather, there are many, many universes, each with very different laws of physics, and, so the theory goes, we inhabit one of them that just happens to have the laws and parameters that are congenial to human life. Those other universes might well be lifeless. This is called the anthropic principle. Essentially, the multiverse idea is a scientific counterpart to intelligent design. They both attempt to address the same intellectual conundrum. So, scientifically speaking, what might a multiverse be? Well, as you'd expect with such a speculative idea, uh, there are a couple of options. The first one isn't all that contentious. I've spoken in previous episodes about how scientists know that the volume of the entire universe is at least 125 million times bigger than the visible universe. And if the entire universe is infinite, then there are an infinite number of pockets of the universe similar to ours. If the laws of the universe change slowly enough that they seem constant in our visible universe, but fast enough that they're different in distant corners of the universe, then each of these pockets of the overall universe might be quite different from than what we see in the nearby universe. And, of course, we live in a pocket of the cosmos that's congenial to us. Another idea of the multiverse is more speculative and is built on the idea of inflation I mentioned in episode 27. 
As each universe buds off from the others, the physical laws in the new universe might be different from ours. And if the idea of the eternal inflation is true, then there are an infinite number of universes out there with different rules. So that's the big idea. The multiverse was invented in part to explain why the rules of our universe seem to be so finely tuned. And there are a number of credible ideas as to how different forms of multiverses might exist. The idea of the multiverse is testable, at least in principle, although solid predictions are few and far between. Some multiverse ideas predict such things as the cosmic microwave background radiation that is the remnant of the Big Bang might have subtle features that reflect other universes. But while some researchers claim to have seen such signatures, the scientific community has not yet embraced these results as definitive. So now you're probably asking yourself, should I believe in multiverses? Or maybe you're asking, does Dr. Don believe in them? I can't answer the first question, but I can the second. No, I don't believe in multiverses. I think they're awfully speculative. On the other hand, neither do I disbelieve in them. I regard them as an intriguing hypothesis, and the fine-tuning problem does need an answer. But, in order to elevate the multiverse idea to the level of real science, we need more testable predictions, and those are hard to come by. I think that, for the moment and for the foreseeable future, whether the multiverse is real or not is an open question, and any reasonable person would have to view the hypothesis with a healthy dose of skepticism. And, speaking of questions, what questions do you guys have for me today?